Bottom level, orange bean, enjoy yourself. Bottom level, orange bean, enjoy yourself. Bottom level, orange bean, enjoy yourself. What's happening here? This is a group of semi-moron epsilons that are going on a nature nausea reinforcement field trip to... I can see that. I meant what's taking you so long. Oh, right away, sir. There you are, all set. Bottom level, orange bean, enjoy yourself. Now, sir. Central Hatchery's plan. Priority. I'm sorry, sir. There's a circuit delay. Oh. Next. The Cathedral of our Ford, please. Uh, just a moment, if you don't mind. I don't think you understood. I said priority. I happen to be the assistant director of the Central Hatchery's plant. Yes, sir. All circuit check. Really, these gammas, they're hardly brighter than the Delta. Or even Epsilons. Oh, no. I'm sure any Delta is much brighter than Epsilons like those. That's one of the wonderful things about being a gamma. We're, we're not, not too, too stupid, stupid and we're, we're not, not too bright. bright. To be a gamma is to be just right. All right, sir. Central hatcheries, red beam, first level. All right, sir. The cathedral of our Ford, please. The cathedral of our Ford. First level, blue beam. Uh, Miss Lysenko, uh, may I see for a moment, please? Hello, Tomikin. I might have a little surprise for little Linda. Oh, what? Tell me. It has something to do with taking you on a very special computer holiday trip. I don't know. Ringo Roebuck wants me to go with him to the Sexorama Festival. And Anwar Bowie wants to take me for a week to a new Sensor World Park. And Ronald Jagger has round-trip tickets special? to... Savage Reservation. Oh, that's different. Everyone will be so envious. But are you sure about it? Oh, it's just a formality. Just a question of my application being correctly... Miss Lysenko, why is this section closed down? Oh, something that was supposed to go click-click started going clack-clack. But naturally, I wouldn't know what. I'm just a beta. Of course, of course. Linda, I have to go now, Tom again. Of course. Artificial sunset has been reset for 6.04 due to technical delays. Artificial sunset has been reset for 6.04 due to technical delays. All for more means more for all. If it can be made, it can be used. And if it can be used, it can be made. History is bunk. Half the time equals double the yield. War is bad for business. As select alphas, conditioned to believe without knowing and to know without believing, you have been chosen to view the surrogate revelations and synthetic mysteries upon which all perfect and placebic belief is founded. Here before you are sacred teletime plex relics of the sanctified life, thought, and holy works of our four, from whose divine inspiration came the ultimate perfection of the endless assembly line, which has given us the ultimate endless, perfect happiness of more things, for more wants in perfect balance with more wants for more things. Let us now repeat the catechism. Community. Community. Identity. Identity. Stability. Stability. Ford bless you. I am Muster Fomand, assistant controller to her Ford chip, Nick Sona Bick, Western World controller, and I have been assigned to show you certain selected histobunk highlights from the past. But everything is perfect now, and everything will always be perfect. So what does it matter what things were like when it wasn't perfect? Excellent point, but quite misguided. Exposing future stability monitors, such as yourself, to the imperfection of the past is, of course, part of the perfection of the present. 
A centuries ago, in primitive times, before the dawn of civilization, there were things that would be inconceivable to us today. Such things as poverty. Although there was actually land and food in abundance, some starved, because unlike our perfect society, they were unable or unwilling to balance population to consumption. Sometimes too much of one, or too little of the other, the result? Disease. And rather than eradicate the sources of disease as we have done, the superstitious primitives continue to rely upon a quite useless class of technicians called doctors. Violence, which the ancients actually appear to have enjoyed and reveled in. While we have been perfectly conditioned to want only what we have, and to have only what we want, and are, therefore, always happy, the uncivilized ancients were prey to destructive emotions, such as ambition, hate, and love, which, of course, always led to violence, which, in turn, naturally, led only to more violence. And senility, while we remain at the prime metabolic age of 35 to ensure a maximum level of useful consumption until painless death from chemo stimulation between the ages of 80 and 90, the people of the past lacked the knowledge of how to stay young, even though they apparently valued youth so highly that they actually indulged in superstitious self-mutilation. As seminarians who will one day take your places in synthoculture stability centers, you must face these histobunk facts, unpleasant and even revolting as they sometimes are, eating the actual flesh of animals and even filthy things from the ground, and sometimes refusing to engage with more than one individual of the opposite sex, and even collecting into groups called families, a pervasively immoral concept of pre-civilized times, Yes, thoroughly disgusting examples of complete sexual perversion, as you can see. Did the primitive females actually... Yes. Primitive females gave viviparous birth to young. Oh. Like animals? Yes, physiologically, exactly like animals. I understand your reactions. Perhaps we should take a brief soma break. Naturally, none of what you have seen would be shown to betas or gammas, much less to deltas like these. But each of you is an alpha. You weren't mass-produced in computer-cloned Bakanovsky batches. And you are all supremely happy, supremely content. But then, that is truly the perfection of our civilization. Everyone is adjusted. Everyone has been conditioned to want to do the work he has to do. And thus, everyone is perfectly happy, perfectly content. Alphas like you, betas, gammas, deltas like these, or even epsilons. Are you happy? Happiness for all is happiness for each. Are you glad to be deltas? Deltas all have lots of fun. Deltas get to play and run. Very good. But do you wish you had been incubated as alphas? No, no. Excellent. That's all. You are viewing Helmholtz Watson's film, Planned Perfection. Each newly produced infant is given six full years of nightly hypnopedic sleep-teach lectures to reinforce class acceptance conditioning. Later, in central conditioning centers like this, each child receives daily happiness reinforcement drills, as well as prescribed courses in erotic play, death acceptance training, full consumption practice, and nature nausea games. Then, upon reaching computer lessons after six more years in a final conditioning school, each happy, healthy individual will go forth to take up his or her predestined place in the greater society, dedicated to ensuring the continuing perfection of community, identity, stability. Excellent and very nicely packaged. You liked the whole film, I mean. 
Oh, immensely. You caught the whole spirit of unchanging perfection, and with admirable simplicity. I'm glad I had a chance to see it before it's computer erased and electro shredded. Computer erased? Electro shredded? Unfortunately, it does contain some dangerously heretical ideas. I made every effort to keep ideas out of it. To take the scene on anti nature conditioning. Charming scene of little children revolted by fresh flowers. The implication is that nature nausea conditioning is necessary to keep people from enjoying the countryside and thus under consuming. But that's true. <laughs> Quite beside the point. I just wanted to show why nature nausea training is one of our most recent improvements in. You see? Recent implies past. Improvement implies progress. And if the present is perfect, then there can't be any progress, of course. And even the word why, why, that's the most dangerous of all. It raises the whole question of purpose. No, I'm afraid it would never do to let an ordinary audience watch anything quite as dangerous as your docu-short. But the test audience watched it. They all liked it. You can see right there. Quite meaningless, since they've been conditioned to like anything that's shown them. But... All my work. Exactly the point. Thousands and thousands of feet of film consumed. Hours and hours of work expended by technicians. And once it's been erased and shredded, it can be done all over again. Remember your sleep talk. Don't delay. Consume today. Use it up and throw it away. I'll make a special effort to keep ideas out the next time. Commendable. You know, I'm reaching the age of 50 now, but I still remember my own youth. And I'm sure I had just as many deviant ideas as you do. How old are you exactly, Helmholtz? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Just think. By the time you reach my age, you'll have been able to have accomplished this dozens and dozens of times. Good work. Just keep it up. But I'm sure there's some mistake. You can check my computer record. I have exceeded consumption and pleasure norms on each of my free vacations. And so I'm eligible now for a free free vacation. Um, this director of stability norms, who's that? I am. Oh, uh, well, and I'm sure you know about this uh... mistake. But I'm afraid it isn't, Thomas. You see, actually, I'm the one who requested the official overview. Well, why? I went through all the proper channels. Why? The savage reservation can be dangerous. Oh, not in the physical sense, but in other ways. You see, these primitives are not at all like, say, the Quakerites who were driven into the Yukon. No, these primitives are quite different. They have actually regressed into an ancient form of tribal society. Their ways are so directly opposite to ours that it can cause a very disturbing effect. As a matter of fact, several previous visitors had to be sent to emotional re-engineering institutes. Naturally, we couldn't chance that happening to someone in your position. Naturally. But uh, you visited the Savage Reservation. Everyone knows that. It certainly hasn't affected you in any way. Perhaps not. But then my predestination conditioning is to accept the unacceptable, while yours is to attain the attainable. This is quite different. But uh, how can I attain the attainable without something unique like this on my computer file? Yes. A valid point. I'll take it into consideration. Uh, when? I mean, I'm planning on leaving tomorrow morning, so uh, if there's any way I could get an immediate clearance... Of course, you could go over my head to the controller's office. Oh, I, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? Well, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I see. But if you had to, you would. Mawina, put that permission order through for him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing. You shouldn't go to the Savage Reservation alone. Take a female along, preferably one with definite anti-deviant morality training. I've already taken care of that. I've engaged several extra females over the past few weeks, precisely to pick out the proper one. Linda Lysenko, one of the fertilization technicians at the plant. A well-conditioned beta minus and very pneumatic.
I think he can continue to be considered for an upper management post, don't you? Yes. But I can't help finding him just a little... Pompous. Yes. Self-serving. Yes. You see, solid managerial potential. But he's so dull. With Alpha's condition for upper-level executive duties like Thomas, being dull is an absolute necessity. It vastly increases their ability to think rigidly and inflexibly. Here, we've been able to speed up the stunning of Epsilon Semi-Morons. An extra half-batch a week. Ah, uh, well, I hope they'll still be able to perform the uh, necessary work. Of course, speeding up the production of gammas and deltas without performance loss is more difficult. But even sub-deltas can still perform routine jobs. Sorting, filing, collecting audience or meter results, that sort of thing. Of course, there's nothing to be done about alpha and beta production. One egg, one bag. Unfortunately, it still takes nine months. Oh, Tomikin, it's you. Look what you made me do. Everything's set for the trip to the Savage Reservation. Plus, of course, you're not interested now. Oh, I am, Tomikin, I am. When? We're catching the early rocket tomorrow morning. Oh, the early rocket? Yeah, what's, what's wrong? Well, it's just that I'm engaging one of the Beta Plus decanters tonight. Adolf Rockefeller. You know, the cute one with the curly eyebrows. And we were going to spend the night at his apartment. But we can spend the night at my place. It's much closer to the rocket port. Unless you'd rather engage me tonight. I'm sure I could rearrange my plans. Oh, no, 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 no. I've already engaged you twice last week. And you know how people gossip. Suppose they start whispering that I have immorally limited my engagements to just one female. I've got my reputation to think of. Uncomputoseptic female. Uncomputoseptic female. You forgot to set your computoception dial on your Malthusian belt. I'm always doing that. Sometimes I wish I'd been incubated as a neutered free martin. Just think. They can engage all they like without having to fuss about computoception. Here, let me help. You don't want to get... You know, pregnant. Did you do the drill yesterday? I think so. Oh, I must have, because I engaged one of the assistant fertilization engineers on the compulsive leisure hour. You know, the tall one. Then just set the dial to the next one. Remember, day plus one equals none. Day plus one equals none. I'm Stelina Shell, Chief Warden for the Reservation. I understand you got in yesterday and rested over. Proper acclimatization, that's the thing. I suppose you stayed at the Lux Hotel at the Rocket Fort? Yes, and it was just as nice as could be. We're quite proud of it. Liquid air, vibrovacuum massage, sense of feely vision in every room. But of course you won't find any of that on the reservation, I'm afraid. Oh, you mean this isn't part of the reservation? Oh, no. This is the official Anthra study station. The reservation itself is some distance... It's quite remote and completely sealed off by an electronic barrier. But you'll be taken directly to our substation by Escaporter. From there, I'm afraid you'll have to go on foot. Of course, you'll have a guide. They're Delta Minuses, but all specially incubated for high eye, ear, nose acuity. Though, unfortunately, at the expense of some other faculties. Well, first we better see if you're properly outfitted. Ion heater. Sense of thermal bag. Extra soma and Infetipep rations. Condensed info food. Ultrasonic microbomb pop popper. You know how to fire this, of course. Safety off. Aim. Press firmly on the clip. It's entirely non lethal. It merely causes temporary paralysis. Um, the savages. Um, I mean, if they're dangerous, I certainly wouldn't want to expose Miss Lysenko. Oh, no, no. It's simply a precaution. Actually, the savages are quite tame. Well, then, if you're ready, I'll show you to the escaporter. This way. We must have come almost a mile by now. Yes. Um, one moment. How far is the Savage Reservation? No, 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 no. Not where is it. How far? There. <laughs> Uh. 
Those things that they're putting into their mouths. What are they doing that for? Stop it. They're eating them. Eating them? But how can they? They're just dirty things from the ground. They're not even wrapped in plastic. Don't they know any better? Of course they don't. They're not civilized. Must be some sort of aberrational pattern. I hear there once was a thing called madness in primitive times. Yes, that must be what it is. Um, maybe we better get away from them. It might be catching. Well, move aside. I, I want to go through. No. It is forbidden to approach the crucified god, Mechaton. I just want to snap some computer pics. No. Where's the director? Who's in charge around here? I am. He's so old! Linda! Far from the village, possibly, just possibly, there's a whole model of tea. Where? They call it the Demon's Place. Of course, if you'd rather stay behind while I go, I... No! Any place would be better than here. I don't care what he says. I can't go any further. Better take an amphetamine. Pascal, a little is good, much is not good. Oh, how awful. <sighs> well, what are you waiting for? Come on, move along. Time for summer bite. Yes, Tom McKinnon. Just a second. J plus one equals none. No, then two. No, one. Coming, Tomakin. Hmm? Oh, is that all you want? I'll just try to be a little quieter. No. The evil one that becomes the spirit of wild animals, Satan. Nonsense. Whatever it is you're muttering about, just leave us alone. Oh. Hey. Get away. No, the evil one, Satan. Well, we'll just see about that.
Linda? After that, he seems to have wandered alone for several days before being found by a search heli rocket sent out by Chief Warden Stelina Shell. Uh, apparently, he initially suffered from deconditional hallucinations, something about demons and uh, sacred relics, according to the chief warden. Yes, spiritual psychosis. Always a danger upon contact with viviparous primitives. I presume he was given the required soma decompression therapy. Yes, and he was completely cured. And subsequent tests showed that he conformed to the proper socioci norms. Then he can still be computogrammed to rise at least one more level before any disabling incompetency factor has to be seriously considered. The female companion, Linda Lysenko. No trace of her was found. No trace. But of course there was no practical reason for searching. Her body would have begun to decompose and would have been much too contaminated for phosphorus chemocovery. Tom, I can't. Oh, my God. Get away from me. I'm not one of you. I don't belong here. I may as well have died. Not that I mind dying. I had very high marks in death appreciation when I was a child. Get away! They're the ones. It's all their fault. Which one? Both of them. That is impossible. Which? Must the truth be torn from your tongue? Both of them. Both of them. Horrible savages. Get them away from me. I want Tomekin back. Then it was the one from the other place. Tomekin. Tomekin. Since it was the other, you may stay. Stay? Stay here? What are you talking about? Get me some Soma. Anything. Can't you see that there's something wrong with me? Probably caught one of your horrible, primitive diseases. It makes me feel like this every morning. And look. That is because of the child. Child? Baby. Baby? Because you are pregnant. Pregnant? (gasps) Male, yes. A male child. I don't care. But you must choose a name for him. And now, while the evening star bears the fullness of moon. I don't care. But without a name, the goddess of light cannot touch breath to his lips. One. John, 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 I don't care. Get out. Leave me alone. services. I've got tickets to the new Ophelia run. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll be ready right after work. Mm-hmm. Wrong. Wrong. Alcohol addict to Alpha Plus bottle. Wrong. Sentho pituitary extract levels, satisfactory. Hyperoxygenation level, satisfactory. Final DNA genetic scansion level. An alpha plus bag of annoyed marks. Of course, it should have been caught earlier on the production line. The chief quality engineer seems to think some of the alcohol for substunting epsilon embryos got into this alpha bag by mistake, but of course, that's quite impossible with the zero flow procedures I've instituted. 
Probably some clerical mix-up before the raw material for the unit reached my division. But I can assure you that I intend to institute increased computer control. Yes, I'm sure. Are there any other production defects? Oh, no, 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 no. Just one random mistake of some sort. A random error. Interesting. The name again? Marx. Bernard Marx. Alpha plus. Male. Shall I order the unit aborted? No. No, proceed with the assembly. <laughs> Male Alpha Plus Mark Bernard G. Inspected and approved. <laughs> Case number nine, Bernard Marks, Alpha Plus, age six, Central Nurseries Plant. Bernard Marks. So he's six years old now. Continued socially erratic behavior patterns. Failure to conform to prescribed intellectual achievement norms. He hasn't been able to keep up intellectually with other Alpha children. Just the opposite. It appears he overabsorbed his rote studies in less than the time frame allotment. A distinct pattern of deviant overintelligence. I see. And the recommendation in Bernard's case? Removal to a reconditional nursery for infants and older children. Denied. But I want to be kept informed of Bernard's progress. Because gray is the nicest... How lucky to be a Delta and get to wear... Too stupid and not too bright. So glad to be a Beta. Beta, so? How lucky to be an Alpha. Everyone is happy. Attention, Central Nurseries Depot. Alpha Ward 1, Electrostall 9, Marks, Bernard G. Rectified. Things like betas or gammas or deltas or epsilons. How lucky to be an alpha. 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 Sleep refreshes. Sleep revives. Sleep refreshes. Sleep revives. Sleep is nice. Sleep is good. Sleep is what everyone should. Mother? No, no, no. I told you. Don't ever call me that awful name. I told you and told you, John. Linda. Linda. Can't you learn to say that? Yes, Linda. What are chemicals? How would I know? It's your book, Linda. Well, that doesn't mean I know what chemicals are. Where do chemicals come from? Well, from the chemical supply depot, of course. If someone wants chemicals, the chemical workers bring chemicals. It's like anything else. Like anything? <laughs> yes, anything. Not like this awful place. If you want synthol food, the workers bring synthol food. If you want plastic clothes, the plastic clothes workers bring plastic clothes. Whatever you want. I wish I could go there, Linda. Oh, I wish I could, too. Everything's so perfect there. Everything's there you could want. And anything you want, you can have. Anything. And if you're ever blue, blue. Wonderful pills that never make you feel bad afterwards, like the mezcal here. And the people aren't evil and immoral. In the other place, everyone engages with everyone the way they should. And you can engage all the time with anyone you want. Like Pele? Oh, no. I'd never bother engaging with someone like Pele in the other place. Can't we go there, please? You don't understand. Too late. Too late. Hey. Hey. Hey, see what I got? Hey, see what I got in Mezcal? Oh, let me have some Pele. Please? Sure, I'll be a little while first. Run out and play, John. I don't want to. Come on, John. <laughs> little wolves have little fangs. Well, 
all well. Bernard Marx again. Still refusing to participate in religious sex devotional exercises, is he? No. This time he disrupted the erotic training class by refusing to play Hunter Zipper. Well, well, Bernard. Don't you like to play Hunt the Zipper? No. Well, well, I see, I see. Sit down, Bernard. No, no, there, in the vibro water chair. Comfy. Now, Bernard, do you want to play Hunt the Zipper? No. Are you sure? You really do want to play Hunt the Zipper, don't you? No. Well, well. Let me ask you again, Bernard. Do you want to be allowed to go back to your erotic training class and play Hunt the Zipper with all the other boys and girls? Yes. Fine. Now run along back and play. Quick, quick. Well, well. He does seem to be a bit of a problem, doesn't he, Miss Arco? I think we'd better schedule him for a few clinical sessions with one of the school's psychosex therapists. Whatever you say, of course. But personally, I think there's something wrong with him. He's so little for his age, hardly bigger than a gamut. You know, they say some alcohol got into his son of blood surrogate while he was still in the bag. Yes, yes. I've heard that, too. Still, you must admit he is brilliant. Oh, and things like computer reading and play math, yes. But he completely failed his sensitivity training 1A. Personally, I think he should be put into a remedial conditioning class. Yes. Or even a moral reformation institute. However, the fact is, Miss Arco, that for whatever reason, Mustafa Mond himself seems to take a special interest in little Bernard. And if the first assistant Western world controller is interested in him, well, then, of course, we are too. Aren't we, Miss Arco? Yes, we certainly are. How all occasions do inform against me. And spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast no more. Leave her alone! You know what she is? Yes, I know. She is my mother. But who is your father? Say that one too. Tomikin. Tomikin. <laughs> now leave. Poe is just trying to be good and do the right thing. Engaging one is bad. Having two is good. Having three is best. Four, five, six is a perfect mix. Seven, eight, nine, whenever there's time. Everyone who's civilized knows that. And now all I can have is Pele because he's drunk and won't work. And no one else wants to. No, not him. I know it's immoral to engage only Pele, but... What can I do when... Almost pernicious woman. Oh, lecherous creature that dust and venom lashes she's with the vile. Oh, say something nice for Linda. From the old book Mitzima gave you. Hmm? But now to sleep. Sleep and see what visions I have seen. Towers cloud-capped. And men that like angels fly. Thither shall we go, you and I. Sub-perfection and gorge are filled with divinity. Miss Trotsky? Miss Meyer? Miss Rothschild? Didn't I order a computer projection feasibility chart on increased production of Delta Pluses? Yes, Director. But it's not there. No, Director. Then where exactly is it? It was supposed to be done by Bernard Marx. He's the new assistant computologist. Oh, yes, I know the one. A very spotty moral record, to say the least. Brilliant, I suppose, but... If only his fortune, Mustafa Mon didn't take such a peculiar interest in him. But if he's fallen down an assignment... Thank you. Yes, yes, yes Director. Director.
Uncle O. Bernard. Oh, Henry, am I interrupting something terribly important? No, Lenina. I'm just doing a current inventory on Epsilon production. I just wanted to make sure it is tonight I'm engaging you. Yes. I'm going to pick you up after work. You didn't forget, did you? Oh, no. I just wanted to make sure. I'll be ready. Bye, Bernard. Lenina. Yes, Bernard? Bye. Bye. Mr. Marks. I believe you were told to compute or project the production feasibility rates of increased delta production. Yes, Director. Then where, may I ask, is the report? Here, sir. Here. And not on my desk computer screen. Well, then it's late. Yes, Director. Unfortunately, I had to revise some of the definitional input from your office, but I think you'll find it all here now. Oh. We shall see. We shall just see. Bernard. <laughs> Hello again. I tried to catch you this morning so we could ask a port here together. Here? I thought you were working on a new feeler. I was, but then the producer came up with a notion for a docu jingle. On the uh, central hatcheries plant. That's interesting, sort of. You must be very happy. Yes, of course. Especially since they selected me over several other jingle writers. Hi. Are you engaging anyone tonight? I'm free. Well, actually, I'm tied up with work. Oh, too bad. Maybe next time. Women, they can be such a distraction, don't you think? Really? How about engaging me tonight, Lenina? Oh, I can't, Benito. I'm engaging Henry Exxon. But ask me again. How can she let herself be poured by the... Be careful. If someone heard you talking like that, even as a joke... You've complained sometimes. I've heard you. Yes, but not over something trivial like that. Bernard, I have to go to a jingle board conference. Uh, stop by and see me sometime. She's not trivial. Hi again. Hi. I saw you with Lenina today. I thought maybe she was engaging you tonight. Oh, Bernard and I have never engaged each other. Maybe Bernard doesn't think I'm pneumatic enough. I think you're very pneumatic. Don't forget about the vacation trip, Lenina. You going on vacation with him? Maybe. I suppose you've decided which girl you're going to take on yours. No? Well, I just can't make up my mind either. Benito asked me, and Henry Exxon, and Nikita Firestone. I just don't know. I want to go somewhere different this time. Somewhere special. Well, I guess I better be going. Henry will be waiting for me. I expected young Marx would soon want to do something quite out of the ordinary. I see no reason not to grant his request. But you don't agree. Well, I know Bernard Marx is a special project of yours. But no one's been allowed to visit the Savage Reservation since Thomas Graham Bell. All the more reason. We can see how he reacts to Bernard's going. Of course, it is young Marx I'm interested in. As you say, a special project. If a random variant like Bernard proves to be socially adaptable, it might mean that certain mutations in the assembly process would be useful. Of course, he could be psycho-emotively disordered by his exposure to the freedom of the reservation. Yes, and then he would be quite useless for further testing. Perhaps if a normative factor is controlled in, a female, has he requested permission to take one along? I believe so. Yes, a beta technician in Central Hatcheries plant, Lenina Disney. Bernard, it's all set. I've arranged my computer leave so I can go to the Savage Reservation with you. That's wonderful. <laughs> of course, we should engage at least once before we go. Otherwise, people will start talking. Maybe even tomorrow night. If I shift around... Could we possibly go somewhere private to discuss this? Whatever for? Besides, I don't have time right now. Come on, Lenina. We're going to be late for the Sensu Fili. Just a second. Yes. Tomorrow night, I'm sure I can fit you in.
Going off on vacation with Lanina, huh? Don't worry. You'll enjoy engaging. I always do. I don't care, and I don't want to hear about it. You seem upset about something. Maybe you've been working too hard, remember? Work to play and play to work. A little Soma. That'll fix you up. Remember, Soma a day. I don't need any Soma, and I don't want any Soma. How about Infinipet? No. Maybe a violence passion surrogate treatment. Sometimes that does wonders. <laughs> You're right. Just step into the psycho porter, sir. Let's make sure you're all comfy and secure in there. We have electrode contact. Yes, all in order. Now, what would your preference be? An Inquisition torture chamber? A pirate raid? Perhaps you'd like to try one of our new gangster rub-out treatments. Something of a novelty, but we've had excellent results with them so far. What's your strongest treatment? The gladiator circus, number four. But I wouldn't recommend that for you, sir. It can be quite demanding, physically. Besides, only betas and alphas are allowed to... I am an alpha. Can't you see what I'm wearing? Yes. I just thought there'd been some slight confusion. I don't think so. Number four, thank you. Yes, sir. Whatever you wish. Did you stop the treatment, sir? Were you displeased? Would you like to try a different one? No, thank you. I'm just, uh... There's some things that I have to think about. Consider. Think. Consider. How awful it must be to be an alpha. And how lucky we are to be gamma. After all... To be good, good is gamma, gamma because, because gamma, gamma is, is good. good. The girl that I was telling you about, Lenina, it's just that I think about her all the time, and what's worse is that now that I'm taking her on vacation with me, I feel even more wanting about her. Oh, where are you going to? One of the new Luxo camps? No. <clears throat> Savage Reservation. Really? How did you manage that? Oh. Maybe something like that is what I need. You know how distracting everything can be. Too many awards, too many girls, too much of everything. Oh, yes. Sometimes. I wish I were young again and just starting out like you. Helmholtz, you're successful. You're talented. Yes, it's true. Everyone says I've written some of the finest contemporary jingles. Still, lately I've had this strange, troubling feeling that there must be something more I can write about. Something different. Really? Like what? Well, like the sensor emotions in the sensor feelings and VPS cubicles. I suppose, I just suppose, that people can really feel those things. Love, hate, passion, jealousy. Now, look here, Helmholtz. Suppose somebody should hear you talking like that. The both of us could be sent to reconditioning centers. Or even to one of those free islands like Iceland or Madagascar. And you know what that means. No Soma, no Amphetopep. No, thank you. You're right, of course. We shouldn't let ourselves talk like this. I shouldn't even let myself think about such things. I wish my problems were simple like yours. Simple? Of course. If you want this, Lenina, just tell her. What could be any simpler? Don't be alarmed, sir. It's just the Solidarity Patrol. Are you all right, sir? Can we help you in some way? I'm perfectly all right. But you're alone, aren't you? 
There must be something wrong if you're alone. No, 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 no. I'm not alone. I'm coming to see someone there in that compartment. Female beta. Oh, that's different. Go right on, sir. a coincidence. Just a minute ago, I was talking about you while Henry Exxon was engaging me. Don't just stand out there. Come in. Not here. Isn't it awfully late for us to engage each other anywhere else? That isn't what I mean. I want you to come with me. Now? In now. There's no one here. It's empty. That's why I come here. By yourself? But Bernard, that's... It's unnatural. I don't like it here, Bernard. It's... It's so silent and... And empty. Bernard, there isn't even any music. Why ever did you bring me here? Why don't we go somewhere so, so we won't be so alone? I want to be alone with you so that we can talk. Talk? But Bernard, whatever would we talk about, especially alone? No one really wants to be alone. I do. I want to be alone. And I don't really know why, except sometimes it makes me feel more special. Different. Like I feel about you now. I don't want anyone else. I want you. Just you. Or no one. But Bernard, everyone has everyone, so no one has no one. Yes, I know. Everyone has everything, so no one wants anything. That's right. You feel better now, don't you, Bernard? A little. Yes. What are you doing here, Marks? You sent for me, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, in a minute, then. Oh, Miss Rothschild. Would you come to my office for a moment, please? Oh, Gina. Marks. Why did I send for him? He's going off on his vacation. You have to sign his computer leave. Oh, yes. Well, then why isn't his file punched up? It is. Hmm. Even worse than I suspected. His work record is definitely aberrational. He has actually been doing twice his scheduled quota of work and barely half his scheduled quota of time. Well, that sort of thing could lead to a complete breakdown of the systems analysis automation. When does he leave on his vacation? Tomorrow. Hmm. Well, perhaps while he's gone, I can do something about him. Well, I suppose I have to see him. Send him in. Send him Mr. Marks, please. Well, Marks, your performance has not been completely satisfactory. I only hope, sincerely hope, that uh, your time away on vacation will allow you to seriously reflect. Well, just where is it you're planning to go? To the Savage Reservation. The Sav... <laughs> That's impossible. Even in the past, only the most rigorously selected individuals were allowed to go there. As a matter of fact, I once went there myself. Yes, sir, I know that. I can personally assure you it would be much too dangerous for someone like you. Only stamina and skill allowed me to survive it, and uh, the female I took along, I don't recall her name, but she was exceptionally nomadic. In any case, she didn't survive it. So you can see it would be quite impossible for you to be allowed to go there. Quite impossible. But I've already been given permission to go. Obviously a mistake of some sort. Not really. Uh, if you'll notice... Uh... It is official. It is signed by his fortune. 
Oh, yes, I see. Ah, uh, if, if you would just sign it too, sir. There. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you, Director. Insipid, pushy little... Something like that in his computer file. He probably thinks he'll be advanced to an administrative position. Well, we'll just see about that. You mean him? Yes, Marx. I think he has some ridiculous idea that he could actually be computed up to my position someday. Well, we'll just see about that. And then Thomas called the whole staff together. Everyone. Even the gamma clerks. And he announced that he was going to be officially removed of all duties because of gross moral and professional dereliction. Bernard Marx? Yes. Well, then, Thomas said, he was going to be officially transferred to one of the substations on a free island. Iceland, I think. As soon as he got back from up. But what are you doing? Just checking the time. But it's still early. And I don't have to be in the office until... Where are you going? I have to make a telly call. Iceland. Ah, Bernard, you don't want to go there. They say it's awful. Transfer. It's not fair. Just because I got permission to come here? Well, he's afraid of how it will look on my file, on my computer file. That's it. What do I do? Just take a few extra grams of Soma. It'll be all right. Was and will make me ill. I take a gram and only am. No. He probably thinks I'll run right back. Then, of course, it won't be on my computer file. Well, well, here you are. I'm the Chief Warden, Stelina Shell. I suppose you stayed over at the Rocketport Lux Hotel? Climatization, that's the thing. I see they haven't outfitted you yet. Well, we'll take care of that, and then I'll show you about. No, uh, thank you. I want to go straight there. To the Savage Reservation? But you should be outfitted first. Ultrasonic microbomb pop popper, extra rations of soma and amphetopep. Thank you. I don't need anything. If we could just go straight to the reservation, please. Well, then of course I won't be able to give you a guided tour of our station, but... Whatever you wish. This way. <laughs> But I used all of mine. You should have taken the ones that the warden offered you. I if there were only somebody here other than these savages. There. No, that's a savage. Oh, but he's different than the others. Good morrow. Strangers. I pray to be of any service to you. Oh, well, thank you. You come from the other place, do you not? Who are you? You see before you a man of besmirched honor and heart, pierced shame. I should have been the one chosen. I could have whispered the whips. I could have appeased the very vaults of heaven and stood in proudest raiment before the crucified son of Mechatan. But no, they denied that to me. 
Oh, I'm Fortune's fool. What a shame. If only I had some Soma to share with you, you'd feel better right away. A Soma a day keeps the Jim Jams away. Sometimes Linda used to say that. Oh? Is she like me? No, not like you. Do you like me? Maybe you'd feel better if we went and... Who's Linda? What? Who is Linda? Oh, my mother. She came here long ago from the other place, but she was lost and separated from Tomekin. My father. Is Tomekin your... My father. Was he from the other place also? When, when did he come here? What, what did he look like? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you, but, but, but Linda could. Do you wish to speak to her? Yes, yes, right away. Linda! Oh, Linda! There's Silva. Are you from the real world? For to be praised. Something nice like that, I guess. If you only knew what it's been like over me here. No Soma. No feelings. No gammas and deltas and epsilons to do the dreadful work. And really, worst of all, if you can imagine... They won't even let you engage with someone any time you want. Can you even imagine? Th that is, he, he said his... Th the one that you came here with, Tomekin, was that the name? No, I just called him that. He was very important. Assistant director of the Central Hatchery. But I've forgotten his his real name. Thomas Grimbo? Yes. But I, I suppose he's forgotten all about me by now. Don't be so sure. How would you and your... How would you both like to come back there with me? You mean to the other place? You'll take us there? Don't you want to go? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Linda's told me how perfect it is. I've dreamed of it. Now to actually go there. Be able to leave this place. It'll be like Miranda and find a new wondrous world. <laughs> oh, what wonder! A brave new world. There's such people in it. The computer records verify her name is Linda Lysenko, a beta minus fertilization technician. And apparently there's no doubt that the young savage called John was... Well, that is to say, she is actually... His mother? Is that all? It's a dreadfully scandalous thing to come to light like this. Of course, but interesting nonetheless. The perfect experimental subject. Have the next call from Mr. Marks transferred here. Directly to your Fortune's office. Directly to me. And only to me. <sighs> What's wrong with her? She's fine. She's just so much tripping. Now, before I go, let me acquaint you with a few of our modern conveniences. Here we have our mini micro snack bar. You just pick whichever item you'd like, push one of the artificial flavor buttons. How about an Insta Burger and some imitation chips? Go ahead, anything you like.
you're not... I'm afraid I'm not very hungry. It's all right. You see? Perhaps there's something worthwhile on the telefeely. The following telefeely program schedule is now available. Channel 1, The Guiding Neon. Channel 2, The Fordian Tabernacle Sing-Along Hour. Channel 3, General Dispensary. Channel 4, High Holy Orgy Day Services. Channel 5. I'm afraid there's nothing much on right now except the uh, detergent cereals and the uh, Sinto religious programs. Maybe you preferred the view. Something different. Uh, seascape. Whatever you feel like. Oh, what wonders. Is all of this in the other place too, Bernard? More than this, John. Lots more. John, you can have anything you want. Then why weren't you happy there, Bernard? I don't know. Uh... Sometimes I, I, I felt like I didn't exactly belong, like I didn't quite fit in with everybody else, but you wouldn't understand about that, John. Oh, but I do, Bernard. I do understand. That's the way I always felt in Malpay, because I wasn't like everyone else. Well, it's going to be different now for both of us. Just wait till we get back and they find out about you, you'll see. But when do we go, Bernard? Soon? Now? First, I have to get permission. That's where I'm going now to make a telecall. While I'm gone... I want you to stay right here. I, I don't want you to go anywhere. Do you understand, John? Oh, yes, but not. You, you'll be all right. You're, you're not afraid. Afraid? No. I mean, to be here all alone. Alone? Did the girl go away? Benina? No, no. She's upstairs storming at me. John, don't worry. Heavenly perfection rests upon her hands, her eyes, her hair, her cheeks. Oh, but to steal an immortal blessing from the lips of my Juliet. And of course, the moment I discovered the actual background of the savage, so to speak, I realized that this could be of considerable scientific importance, naturally. Yes, yes, Mr. Marks, I understand the situation. Permission will be granted for you to bring the savage and the woman back here. And I will expect you to give me a full report on the savage's activities and reaction. Yes, Sir Fortune. You can count on me to do everything necessary to see that full advantage is taken of the savage. For science, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Marx. I have called the members of the upper staff of the plant here for a necessary but unfortunate reason. As director of the Central Hatcheries plant, I have a special responsibility to see that its reputation remains absolutely spotless. Marx there? Yes. But there's also... Doesn't matter. Whatever it is can wait. Send him in. Well, Mr. Marks, I suppose you know why you've been summoned here today. Yes. I've decided to make an example of you so that it will be clear that deviance and immorality will not be tolerated. 
That is why, as you see, I have called the staff together. So that they may derive the proper moral lesson from witnessing your disgrace and your dismissal. Good. Good? Yes, good. I'm glad they're all here. Mr. March, you seem to be taking this very lightly. But perhaps once you've been transferred to the island of Iceland, you'll begin to realize... Just one moment. Do you realize that you're interrupting me? Yes, I realize that. But there's something of particular interest that I would like to bring to your attention. I'm not interested in anything you have to show me, Marx. I think you'll be interested in this, Director. Where is he? Where's my town that can... Oh, that's him. Of course it is. Did you really think I wouldn't recognize him, my very own Tomic? Stop it. What, what are you doing? Get, get away from me. Don't you remember me, Tomic? And don't you remember your little Linda Kent? Get this awful creature away from me. I have no idea who she is. I, I've never seen her before in my life. Oh, yes, you have. You took her to the Savage Reservation with you. It's me. You're Linda Kent. You, you can't be. I, you're dead. I, the female I took with me, she died. It's a lie. Marx, he's the one. He's behind this. I didn't die, Tomikin. The savages found me and took me to their village. And I couldn't leave because... Because of... Our John. John? John, what, what are you talking about? years of dedicated work. Not a single moral blemish on my computer file. I never allowed myself to engage the same female three times in one month. I faithfully attended orgy services each and every week. It just isn't fair. Yes, I see your point. But unfortunately, your past good record cannot undo the scandal. Well, it's just a thought, but... Maybe if you went away somewhere, somewhere far away. Yes, someplace where they won't know about me. I see. You want a transfer? Yes. Yes, a transfer to some place where they won't know about this awful scandal, where I won't be the object of ridicule. I've heard there is an opening with the hatchery substation on Iceland. Iceland, uh, yes. That sounds remote enough. Would you see that his transfer to Iceland is put through immediately? This way. Uh, that awful Linda creature, she isn't out there, is she? No, she didn't come. Just your, your son. Oh, no. 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 Perhaps you better take him the other way. What a shame. Yes, I could tell how deeply you were affected by his predicament, Mr. Marks. Well, I mean, it is sad. A man who's given so much to so many out like that. Oh, then you've modified your opinions of our society, I take it. You seem to have been making quite a splash with your savage. Oh, it's amazing. People are clamoring. I've received telecalls from some of the most respected people. 
Everyone wants to know what he's really like. Yes, I'm sure. But for the moment, I'm much more concerned with what he thinks of us. I'm going to leave you in charge of him. But of course, I will require complete reports on everything he does. You understand? Yes, of course, Your Fortune. So this is the savage. Well, come in. I'm summoned forth. But you'll get to come and see me, won't you? Is that allowed? Oh, yes, that's allowed here. In fact, required. But come along now. You'll have time for that later. Fare thee well at once. Anand? What's going to happen to him? As a matter of fact, I've just been given full responsibility over him. By his forgeship, personally. I've been instructed to show him everything and to report back directly. Oh. Well, that won't leave much time for engaging, will it? I'm afraid I'm going to be rather busy. I met John. Perhaps I can work something out for you. Well, and what shall we call you? My name is John. But your last name, I mean. Why not Savage? Mr. John Savage, how does that strike you for a name? It boots not. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. A rose. Oh, yes, of course. You do not have roses here, do you? Oh, I'm sure we do. In one of our nature nausea classes or museums. But don't people wish to see flowers growing? Uh, they did once. But we found that flowers are counterproductive. The time that could have been spent producing or consuming was wasted idly looking at flowers. I'm afraid I do not understand. Well, of course you don't. Uh, yet. But you will. That is, if you stay with us. You're not going to send me back. No. No. Well, only if you wish. You see, Mr. Savage, here in our world, you may do anything you wish, be anything you wish, have anything you wish. Yes, and have anyone you wish. Linda? Linda? No, no, Mr. Savage, you mustn't disturb her. She's having her joy hour. How do I know she's all right? You can see for yourself. Just look at her. If she is happy, then beasts that reason not and lack all discourse are happy. Linda? Linda? Go away. It's John, your son. Go away. Selma! 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 Now see what you've done? You've completely thrown her off her Selma schedule. Oh, I'm very sorry. That is all, Manny Nurse. I'm Phillips Park Ludens, the chief dispenser. What is it, Mr. Savage? Linda, I want to have her with me. Quite out of the question. But she belongs with me. She's my mother. I will not tolerate that sort of dirty language in my dispensary, Mr. Savage. And if you plan to say any more filthy things like that, I'll simply have to ask you to leave immediately. This way, please. I'm, I'm sorry. F forgive me. But I do want to have her with me. I don't think you understand, Mr. Savage. Here we have her on a strict summer schedule. Two happiness hours and one full joy hour a day. Without proper dispensary supervision, she would immediately soma coma. And if she didn't get any soma? Then she would, of course, scream incessantly. Is that what you want? Oh, no, 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 no. But this soma, aren't you actually shortening her life by giving her so much? In one sense, yes. But in another, we're actually lengthening it. A megasoma coma is a bit of what the ancients used to call eternity. Eternity? Eternity was in our lips and eyes. You mean that? Not exactly. In any case, Mr. Savage, you can be sure we'll do everything possible for her here. Although, of course, nothing can save her. You don't mean she's dying now? No, no, not now. But, of course, sooner or later, the megasomidosis will lead to paralysis of the respiratory sector. Her breathing will then cease, and she will die of terminal bliss. I want to be with her. 
How soon will it happen? It's difficult to say, especially in her case. The first sign is usually a brief reality relapse. Of course, you wouldn't want to see her then. But I would. Very well, Mr. Savage. I'll see that you're contacted. Two, his Ford ship, Mustafa Amand, Western World Controller, from Bernard Marx. Subject, John Savage. I first took the Savage to the great cathedral of our Ford. He was obviously inspired by the deep synthetic reverence of the worshippers. And I believe I was able to explain to him the rudiments of surrogate spirituality and placebic belief. John's tour of a senior kindergarten conditioning school was, under my close guidance, a complete success. Naturally, I couldn't explain all the educational intricacies such as advanced play math to him. But I believe that with my further help, he may well be able to grasp some of the simpler things such as nature nausea reinforcement conditioning. Not what? While the savage was obviously charmed by the primary erotic play class, it did seem to raise a question in his mind. He asked again, where without, without mothers, where the children came from? Now, Mr. Savage, I think you'll find this very interesting. After the embryos are bagged, they come along here for initial model selection. At the moment, we're turning out redesigned deltas. Oh, Juliet, move not. And on thy sweet lips would my soul be purged. Mr. Savage, come along. I want to show you our all-new and fully improved Bakanovsky embryomatic separator. One epsilon unit goes in, and out come 60 reproductions, absolutely identical to the original in every production detail. Come along. Did you sprinkle on additives or mix them in? I'm sorry. Please, no more questions. We must keep on schedule. Are you engaging anyone tonight? Perhaps. I'll give you a telecall. Thank you. John, hurry. We'll be late for the Ford State Synthesis Service. What are they doing? Uh, these are the Delta workers receiving the daily ration of Soma. Hi, Linda. Yes, not as much, but the same thing. Why? Why? You said they were happy. Well, of course they're happy. Everyone's happy. Then why do they take the Soma? Because it's prescribed. Three after work and six on the Ford State. Why, Bernard? John, really, you must stop using that word. Call this over here, Mr. Savage. Uh, that's enough. We have to go on with our tour for Mr. Savage. No more pictures, but we need a statement from him for the Daily Telly Times. Say one of your funny things, Mr. Savage. Go oh, for a muse of fire that will ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and nobles to behold the swelling scene. It's wonderful. That's just perfect. Should I go on? Say something more, anything at all. That's all. I'm sorry. We must go on with our tour. Now, you can all interview Mr. Savage later on. Right this way, Mr. Savage. I hope that none of that upset him. I mean, I do hope that you won't put anything uh, unfavorable about our operation here in your report. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You can count on me to leave out any minor matters, as long as we understand each other. Oh, we do. We do, Mr. Marks. I assure you. Uh, careful, Mr. Savage. Not too close. What is this? Uh, those are heliofusion tubes. You see, we take helium energy from the sun. The sun, up there, hot, hot. Then we pipe it thousands and thousands of feet down there, underground, where it's turned into nuclear fusion energy. Bubble, bubble, fizz, fizz. Then back up comes fusion energy through those tubes. It's really quite simple. Approach, thou beacon to this underglow. And thou, oh, shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, uh, I suppose you could put it that way. You will put that in your report, won't you? I mean that I explained everything to him. What's wrong with them? 
Oh, that's a batch of our especially substunted Epsilon workers. As you can see, Mr. Savage, they were designed specifically for heliofusion work. Heat immersion pigment, or growth inhibiting hormones. You will note that their bodies were designed to fit perfectly into the coils of the tubes. And not may we go. Oh, but we haven't seen the Delta Radiotax workers yet. We haven't seen... I must go. I feel a sickness of spirit. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, perhaps we'd better go. Uh, Uh, But you won't put any of this in your report, will you? We have to leave. You're behind schedule. Take your elevator down for another batch. You did extremely well the other day at Electro Obstacle Golf. I mean, for never having played the game before. But it's not a game, Bernard. Everyone just sits at that machine and presses buttons, but no one runs or jumps or throws like in a game. Uh, It used to be like that once, I think, with a round object that people used to hit this way and that with sticks. Naturally, not that many people could play at the same time. But as soon as uh, they replaced these sticks and round things with machines, then, of course, more people could spend more time consuming more energy. No one plays, though, Bernard. Why do you call it a game? Because, because, because that's what it's called. Central Celebratorium 2, priority. Very good, sir. First level, pink beam. What is this, Bernard? This is the slumberatorium garden of the departed ones, and there's no need to whisper. Beautiful, aren't they? Are they truly dead? Oh, yes. Naturally, the departed ones aren't shipped here for formal cosmetic reconstitution until they've passed on. But I can assure you, this is exactly the way each one looked in their real life. What killed them? Oh, nothing at all. By taking the correct chemicals, we all stay young till perhaps 80, 90... That's when the uh, metabolic strain causes PPO. That's peaceful passing on. Where is that writer from Creative Cremation? It's all right. You pushed the disposal button. Where did he go? Down to the chemo recovery furnace. The bodies are brought here for cosmetic reconstitution before cremation and final chemo recovery. That way, the chemicals that are salvaged from the body are returned to usefulness. Let's go. And the individual goes on being part of the greater society forever. Good. Do you want to play the plop plop game? Yeah! (laughs) Well, have you all finished your yum yum soma candy? Yeah! Since you've all been very, very good on our whole death training picnic, I guess it's time for your reward. Each one gets one plop plop. Yeah! But just one. Go on. children all together death is perfect death is fun death is good for everyone good very good let's do it again and show mr savage here how we sing our we're not afraid of dying song when there's no one left sing a song of death four and twenty courses baking in the stew Making pretty chemicals just for me and you. Death is perfect. No, you don't understand. Death is dark as night. In that country from whose born no traveler returns. And none need court death. For death will come to each. So let us sit upon the ground. Tell sad stories of the death of kings. Let us talk of graves. Really, Mr. Savage. Of what? You have completely ruined my death training class. Now I'll have to start all over again with them. <gasps> Come on, children. We'll go back to the dying in hospital and have a fun picnic. Come along. Come on.
If you ask me, I think you'd better start educating your savage, Mr. Marks. Come on. Sorry, Bernard. I seem to have done something wrong. John, this incident is strictly between you and me. And the savage then completely disrupted an advanced syntho philosophy course by asking strange questions of the students. What sort of questions exactly? Well, here, for instance, he asked them to explain to him why life was a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Some sort of primitive gibberish, obviously. Ah, uh, yes. Macbeth. Uh, yes, obviously, the gibberish. How about females? How many has he engaged with? So far? None. I know it's incredible. But at least according to this report from Bernard Marx, that does seem to be the case. And despite several illustrated lectures on morality, he still seems to be attached to his... His mother? Yes, his mother. Decidedly unnatural. For us, of course. But not for John Savage. Not yet. Well, suppose he contaminates others with this sort of base animalistic attitude. Unnatural is unnatural. Perhaps. But then that is precisely what the experiment is all about. To determine whether or not the savage can adjust to our higher plane of morality. Of course, if that proves to be impossible, the experiment will have to be terminated. Should I advise Bernard Marx of that? No, I don't think so. After all, Mr. Marx is part of that experiment now, too. I really think I've done wonders with this boy. Of course, you have no idea how difficult this sort of responsibility can be. Tours, interviews, lectures, and of course, our fortune wants me to report personally about the savage. Well, I suppose I should be quite impressed with you these days, Bernard. Well, enough about me. Tell me about yourself, how much. What have you been doing? Just a small piece of my own I've been working on. Maybe you'd like me to show it. Oh, I would love you to show it to me. The only problem is I don't have the time. I'm sorry. You do understand, don't you? Yes, I think I do. You've changed, Bernard. I'm not surprised that you noticed. Everyone has. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, Sigmunda Luce, that's the head of the Human Element Reconditioning Bureau, told me that everyone's been saying that I'm really a new, improved Bernard Marx. What happened to the young man I used to be able to share in a concerns with and questions on the nature of free will? What happened to the young man who so often wondered what it would be like to live free of conditioning? What happened to that, Bernard Marx? It was all computer nonsense. I've outgrown all that. I really must hurry now if I'm going to make my engagement with Miss Sigmunda. Uh, Uh, how about just a word to the wise from a friend? The sort of things that you were talking about for inner concerns, free will. I really think you should be more careful. I will. Tonight? Huh? You're going to engage with the savage tonight? <laughs> how thrilling. Bernard arranged. Oh, I really do envy you, Lenina. I mean, everybody's talking about you. The trouble is, I feel like I'm getting all this attention under false pretenses. The first thing everyone wants to know is what's it like to engage the savage. The trouble is, I just can't tell them. <gasps> you mean, <gasps> you mean you've never engaged with the savage? <gasps> Why not? I've given him every opportunity. There must just be something about me that he doesn't like. Well, maybe tonight will be different. We're going to see the new Feely, and then we're going to take a sense of pleasure tour. He's bound to be in the right mood after that. Everyone says it's just wonderful. What is it? What's wrong? You have to put your hand on the feeling it, or else you won't get all the effects. Oh, Junie June, I swear by yonder moony moon. Mm, no, no. Oh, I hear someone coming. You must go, quick. 
saying goodbye is so much fun that I will keep it up till night is done. No, no, it's wrong. Never you and Julian is like that. And I am a Beethoven. What's in a name there? Would you sit down, please? Lenina, you shouldn't go to see things like that. The feeler, you mean? It was based in ignoble. It was unworthy of someone like you. Well, I didn't know it was going to be like that. That it would be something that would upset you, I mean. You didn't know? Well, then, that explains everything. It does? Oh, then I'm glad. Well... Good night. Good night? Aren't you... I mean, I thought that... No. Don't you like me? Don't you like the way I look? Why don't you just come in and... No, I, I mustn't. Fine, I'm sure. Fine. Fine? This is going to be perfect. You don't know who I've got coming here. Look at this. Director of the Institute of Illustrated Mechanics. Headmistress of Harvard. Head of the Joint Chiefs of Computability. President of the Council of Decantation Control. This is just the beginning. You name them, I've got them. Oh, and Helmholtz, if, if you would like to come yourself, that's fine. You're more than welcome to. Excuse me for one moment. After this party, I'm sure I'll be invited everywhere. Is that what you want, Bernard? Of course, don't you? I suppose. Or at least I know I used to. Well, I'll put a word in with the right people for you, Helmholtz. You know, since I've been in charge of John, I've met some very influential people. Where is John? Oh, John, he should be out here by now. I better go check on him. Uh, you're absolutely sure you won't stay for the party, Helmholtz? I don't think I'd fit in with your guests. I'm sure you know best. What are you doing? No, no, that won't do at all. What? What are you wearing? I told you I want you to change back into what you had on when you came from the reservation. Bernard, I need to talk to you about some things. John, my guests are arriving. I need to talk to you about Lenina. No, no, she would not do at all. Now listen, they're expecting to see the savage. Naturally, they want you to look like a savage. Change. Mr. Martz. Where is the savage? He's getting ready. There's Elton Lear, that marvelous telecartoonist. If you'll pardon me for one minute. Anita Shapley, director of the Bureau of Standards and Practices of Socio-Sex Norms. Bernard Marx? I'm, I'm Mr. J. Edgar Milhouse, professor of shredology of the Advanced College of Histobunk Rectification Studies. Professor Milhouse, I, I'm so Who are you? To... I'm your host. I'm Bernard Marx. Oh, well, well, where is he? Where is the savage? Well, I didn't come here to chit-chat. I want to see him now. Yes, of course, Professor, of course. I'm just on my way to get him at this moment. Her Reverence Archdeaconess Rona DeMille, Director of Orgy Porgy Services and Disco Worship. Your Reverence, I shall return in one moment. You have to come out, John. That's all there is to it. I promised every one of them that they could meet you, and every one of them is here. You should have asked me first whether I wanted to meet them. Look, you don't even have to say anything. Oh, maybe one or two of your little speeches the way that you do. Please, come on, John. Please. I will not be as flies to wanton boys. They kill us for their sport. That's exactly the sort of thing that I'm talking about. That's exactly what I mean. If you could just come out and say something wonderful to them like that, they would adore you. No. John, how can you act like that? I 
after all that I've done for you, bringing you back here and everything else, John, this party is very important for me, and it should be important to you also. Everybody's here. Everyone who matters, they're all waiting to see you. John, you're acting like an absolute epsilon. I promise you, he is on his way. He'll be right here. He is coming. Excuse me. You haven't tasted the artificial soybean pie. It's delicious. No, I haven't, and I do not intend to. I have never been so humiliated in my life. Imagine rearranging my entire schedule to come here and examine the savage, and all for nothing. Oh, no, not all for nothing. He's a marvelous boy. I've made a note of this, Marks. And as far as I'm concerned, you should have been sent away somewhere. And after this... Maybe you will be. Professor, what... I think that I was actually going to invite him to a high, holy disco mass. <laughs> you can be certain that after this, he'll never be invited anywhere. Would you all just please wait one... Don't think you're going to get away with this, you little nothing. I'm going to see that everyone finds out about this little fiasco you've stayed. If you would all wait and be patient for one moment. Obviously, Thomas was right about you. Now everyone will know what you're really like. Benito, don't go. We can talk about all times. We've always been friends. Not now, Bernard. I mean... If I stay here with you, then they start laughing at me, too. Oh, I'm coming out of here! Get out of here, all of you! All right, get out! Just get out! Get out of here! Hey, Bernard, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Bernard. Did you send them away? No, they left. When they couldn't see you, they just left. It's a scandal. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Everyone's going to be laughing at me. Once in Malpe on the reservation, more than anything, I wanted to be chosen to be one of the hunters. They didn't want me. They laughed at me. Well, what did you do? I hunted alone. Well, it's not like that here, John. The most important thing is community, identity, stability. It's wrong to do something alone. Besides, what would I do? Anything you wish to do. Um, I know you want to help, and I appreciate it, but you couldn't possibly understand what I'm going through. After all, you're nothing but an uncivilized savage. Bernard. Everything will be all right again. I don't think so. I think it will be exactly the way it was before. The way you were when I first met you. But that would be very good. What are you talking about? Oh, Bernard, there's nothing wrong with being unhappy. Perhaps I do not understand. Perhaps you should speak to a friend you can trust. You have a friend, don't you? Of course I do. I have dozens of them. Dozens. Helmholtz. He's got time for me day, night. Come on. Whoever it is, go away. I don't want to see anyone. Helmholtz, it's me. Please, there are people trying to engage instead of wandering about shouting in the middle of the night. Oh, Bernard. John. Well, come here, come here. Really? Some people just have no sense of decency at all. It was horrible. To have everyone leave me there. To be left. Alone. All alone. You can't imagine what that felt like. But I can. That's exactly what happened. I found out I could imagine it. I was chosen to give the guest lecture at the School for Advanced Emotional Engineering. I don't know what suddenly possessed me, but instead of using the prescribed rhymes as examples, I started reciting a work of my own. A new jingle. Well, what's the harm in that? No, it's different than that. Wait. Here. I'll read some of it for you. I flee... From all committees. Stick, but a broken drum. Midnight in the city. Flutes in a vacuum. Shut eyes, sleepy faces, every stopped machine. Oh, stop it! No. 
I know it's full of ideas, dissident ideas. There's even a part later on about the pleasures of solitude. Well, don't read it. Ideas like that. Well, my fort, suppose they got inside someone's head. Yes, that's what the president of the Solidarity Council said when I had to appear before them. And of course they're right. I know they're right. It's just that I can't... Well, you should have destroyed these. You should have computer shredded them. They're not jingles. I, I have no idea what they are. Poetry. 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 What kind of thing is this? Explain it to me. Well, it's... It's not like anything else. It's beautiful. Like this. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. That's worse than what Helmholtz read. Beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Just stop it! I can stop it! Bernard! Bernard is right. The words are uncivilized, vulgar. And yet the sound of them, the rhythm. Obviously, whoever wrote them was a first-rate propaganda technician. Some primitive jingle writer, I suppose. But the emotions, the ideas, grief, hate. <laughs> Computer lessons vowing to angels and God. <laughs> no, it's all too uncivilized and vulgar. <sighs> if only there were some kind of believable madness and violence and passion that one could write about. But what? What could it be? <clears throat> First of all, I hope that your fortune understands that I've made every attempt to reform the savage's thinking. As a matter of fact, the constant contact with the savage has allowed me to rededicate myself to the ultimate principles of community, identity, stability, so that I can fulfill it. Yes, I'm sure it has, Mr. Marx. I'm sure. But at the moment, I am much more interested in the social and emotional development of the savage than I am in you. Oh, yes, of course. I'm getting to that. I merely wanted to make sure that your fortune understood that any maladjustment shown on the part of the savage is not my fault. Then whose fault is it, Mr. Marx? Well, as a matter of fact... He's been spending a great deal of time with Al Holtz Watson. They seem to be spending hours together talking of all sorts of aberrational things like grief, passion, love. Not that I let myself be in the least contaminated by what they're saying. But of course you listened to it. Yes, of course I have to. It's part of my duty, isn't it? On the other hand, if you feel that I, I shouldn't... No, not at all. How else would you be able to report to me? <sighs> yes, that's what I thought, and of course, it's the only reason I did listen. You say that the savage talks a great deal about passion, and in fact, love. Perhaps his maladjustment has to do with his relations with women. It can't be. He doesn't have any relations with women, I mean. Not that I haven't tried my very best to explain that he should engage with as many women as possible, but apparently he's just too primitive to understand about morality. As a matter of fact, he actually seems to think it's wrong to want more than one female. Then there is one particular female he has shown a more than ordinary interest in. Yes, I've made due note of it. I can give you the name. Not that I've observed them myself, but I did hear the savage mention the name to Helmholtz. It's Lenina. Lenina Disney. Perhaps I could speak to her if you like, uh, warn her of, of the consequences. No. Since she is apparently part of the experiment now, too. Wrong. 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 Cease all computer sex order operations. Wrong button. Wrong button. What happened, Lenina? I don't Wrong. know. I was supposed to be fertilizing Cease a batch of gamma females, and I think I turned them all into epsilon males. They can always use an extra batch of epsilons. But that's the third mistake I made today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, I do. You haven't engaged with a single man in over a week, and you refused to go to the orgy session last night at the YWFA. I suppose everybody's talking about how bad and immoral I am, but I 
can't help myself. All I want is him. John. Oh, Helmholtz. I'm very glad you could come. I need to talk to you. I'm here for you, John. I just don't understand you. Sometimes I think you want me, and sometimes I think you don't. Don't you like me even a little? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, more than that. More than words can wield the matter. Oh, I knew you really wanted to be with me. You do, don't you? I mean, I want to be with you always, forever, for all eternity. No, don't say things like that. First you say such nice things to me, and then you talk to me as if I were some awful bad woman. Oh, no. You, so perfect, so perfect, and so peerless, created of every creature's best. But if I'm so perfect, then why haven't you asked for me? Because I'm not worthy of you. In my village should not pay, I would have brought you the skin of a mountain lion. But here I do not know what it is I should do to prove myself to you. Nanina, set me a task, anything. Let me fetch and carry for you. But why? There are machines to do everything. Or at least epsilon semi-morons. Besides, you needn't do anything at all. Just take me. Oh, please, take me. Oh, please, make me quick. I'll set my dial so you can drive me wild. Oh, hug me. Hug me till you drug me. Give me a kiss that's full of bliss. Oh, shame, where is thy blush? Get me to a nunnery, go! A what? Assume a virtue if you have it not! Out of my sight, damn it, whore! A gram is better than a dam! When your nerves go jingle jangle, a soma will make you spick and spangle. Bitch, you know the soiled horse, go to it with a more riotous appetite! Oh, frailty. Thy name is woman. Was this goodly book made to write whore upon it? Come to look. Come to look. Yes? John Savage? Yes, this is John Savage. Linda Lysenko. How serious? Approaching terminal bliss. Before you're dying in hospital, I'll be there right away. I did love you, once, and love is madness. John? Telecom, it's all right. Yes, sir. Nanny Nurse, what is this commotion about? He insists on going into the intensive euphoria unit. Are you the head Nanny Nurse? Yes. My name is John Savage. There's someone here. Linda Lysenko. I have to see her. I'm sorry, but uh, no visitors are allowed in the IEU ward without permission from the chief dispenser. I, I received a call. She was dying. Of course. We naturally assumed that you would be glad to hear the news. I'm not glad to hear it. Well, we can't have that. After all, death is happy. Death is good. I'll see that you get an amphetapep pill. No, I don't want a pill. I just want to see my mother. Mr. Savage, we don't allow that sort of dirty talk in here. That is all, Nanny Nurse? Yes, Chief Dispenser. Now then, Mr. Savage, I assume that you're here about Linda Lysenko. Well, I can only tell you that she's doing extremely well. Her megasoma infusions have had to be slightly increased. But she really seems quite cheery and happy, as of course is normal. 
Altogether, we're quite pleased with her condition. You, you mean she's going to be all right? She is all right, Mr. Savage. But, but the telecall. They said she was dying. Yes. Any moment now, I should imagine. Tests indicate it will really be quite quick and simple. No need at all for a simple euthanasia treatment. May I see her first? I can't imagine why. But she's through there, in the final euphoria lounge. Don't disturb the others who are dying. The others? Of course. Death is social, and death is shared. There. Yes, exquisite, isn't it? Of course, I can't do the sort of finished artistic work they do in post-termination with molded plastic application, silicone injections, and pigment infusions. Still, I actually prefer the little... What shall I call it? Lifelike quality that's always lacking in post-termination. This... isn't Linda Lysenko. No. I was going to start next on her. And believe me, you absolutely will not know her when I'm through. No. But the results are so much better if I can start while they're still in a pre-terminal state. No! Well, if you don't care how she looks. Linda. Linda. Playing outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to study now. So, when we go back to the other place, you'll know everything. Mm -hmm. Say your alphabet now with me. A, B, C. Vitamin D, the... I forgot, what is it? I've forgotten. A, B, C, C. Vitamin D, the fats in the no. water, the gods mm. in the sea. That's it, that's it. E, F, G. G. H and R, forwards in this flicker, and this goodies in the sky. sky. Linda. John? Is that you? Don't go away again. I won't. Tell me. Tell me again about... About... What was it? About the pretty lady dreaming. Mm. Tell me that now, please. See what visions I have seen. What towers cloud capped. And men that like angels fly. Thither shall we go, you and I, and sup perfection. Now, children, everyone will get his turn. And the one who does the best will get an extra Soma Queen treat. Yay! You don't mind if my class plays a little, do you? Oh, no, not at all. That's part of the fun of my job. Good. Everybody ready? Yeah. Get set. Go! What's wrong with it? Leave her alone. You understand? Leave her alone. And get them out of here, you understand? Get them out of here! Certainly not, Mr. Savage. You should know by now that this is a prescribed death training class. How dare you interfere with the children's death conditioning? Get them out of here! 
Come along, children. Come along. We'll go play somewhere else. Come along. We'll have a nice game of hunt the zipper. And then we'll go to the crematorium and we'll have lots more fun. Really? No. It's John, Mother. It's John, your son. John. Hold me. I feel so... Help me. Please help me. Yes. But there's nothing at all wrong. She's just dead. Attention in the intensive euphoria lounge. A new happy one has just passed on. They'll be right in to get her. Are you sure she wouldn't benefit from a little touch-up before... yourselves into lines for soma distribution. Thank you. Please form yourselves into lines for soma distribution. Thank you. Please form yourselves into many goodly creatures there are here. How beauteous mankind is. How brave new world. In line, everybody. That's it, everyone. This In line. line. This soma is bad. It's poison. It hurts you. Please, Please don't, don't do that, take Mr. Any. Savage. Soma makes you into slaves. It robs you of, of everything magical and special within you. Mr. Savage, please don't do that. You can never be free until you're free of soma. Everyone be calm. There is an ample supply of soma, enough for everyone. I'm not going to let you take any more. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Don't you want to feel alive? Don't you want to feel free? Don't you want to feel the blood coursing in your veins? Mr. Savage, don't do that. This is poison! Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage, please. Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage, they need their soul. No, they don't. Emergency. Ilio fusion plant number three. Send solidarity forces immediately. Number 317, occupant John Savage. Present location, activity respond. Where's Savage? That's what I'm finding out now. 
Soma Distribution Center Heliothrax Energy Plant. Activity inciting riot. Oh my fault. They're going to think that this is my fault. Where are you going? To help Dad. Soma! 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 He's out of control. He's totally out of control. Uh, let's get out of here. No. Let's help him. There. Stop them. It's all right now. We'll take care of everything. Ready to spray them with soma vapor. Cover them with anesthetic hypo beam. Bring up the central music speaker. Ready to synth cast. Voice of reason tape? No. I think the voice of good feeling. Anti-riot speech number two. Medium strength. Yes, sir. My friends, my friends. Please, please. What is the meaning of this? My dearest friends, why aren't you all being happy and good together? Happy and good. At peace. At peace. Be calm. Be calm. Please, please. I do want you to be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Now goodbye, my dearest, dearest friends. May the good Lord keep you and watch over you. Now Destroy goodbye, so. my dearest, dearest Destroy friends. So. May the good Lord. Apparently, the soma vapor did not completely restore them to emotional stability. Destroy soma. Destroy soma. Destroy soma. Farewell. We don't need your soma. We're free. Right? He's the one who caused it. The savage. Well, nevertheless, I'm afraid we'll have to take them all in. Will the three of you come along quietly, or must we anesthetize? We'll come. Thank you. Oh, me? Well, why me? I'm, I'm not involved. In this is a mistake. I'm sorry, Mr. Marks, but orders have been issued directly from the Western Controller's office by his forward ship, Muster Fermand. All three of you to be taken in immediately. They're here. Yes, they're waiting for you. It's a shame. Especially the savage. After all, he was anthropologically unique. Why are they taking so long? What are they going to do? If I could just explain to someone this isn't my fault. What are you doing? I'm making some notes on a new jingle about feeling. Feeling what? I don't know. Something, anything. Just feeling. Well, that's ridiculous. And it's certainly not going to be any help with the trouble we're in here. I don't care about that. Well, I do. What about me? What rhymes with hurt? Quirt, dirt, a spurt. That's it. Not the deepest wounds could hurt. Though from them life's blood did spurt. You'll tell them for me, won't you, John? Yeah. That this isn't my fault? I'll tell them what you... Look at this, Bernard. It's an antique. They call it a book. No. It's Shakespeare. Looks like a book to me. Fortune. I can explain everything. It was a mistake. We didn't mean it. I did. I meant to do just what I did, and I'm not sorry. Well, I want your Fortune to know that I'm sorry. I'm deeply, deeply sorry for everything that I've done wrong, whatever it is. Yes, yes, Mr. Marx. And what about you, Mr. Savage? Any apologies from you? No. Apparently, you don't like our civilization at all, do you? No. Then you find nothing in our way of life to your liking. Nothing at all. The music. That sometimes is pleasant. Oh, yes. If music be the food of love, enough of that. You've read Shakespeare. Oh, yes. And others. Music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. You see, Mr. Savage, my special conditioning has allowed for all this, even though it's prohibited to everyone else. For those of us who must ultimately guide others to do what is right, it is imperative to understand the lure 
of what is wrong. And of course, it is a lure, isn't it? Yes. No, no. I hated every moment of it. Well, unfortunately, whatever the motivations, your actions have caused problems. Uh, definite problems. But then there's a quite simple way of removing them. What is that? By removing both of you, of course. Oh, no. You will have to be removed to some other place so that the possibility of the contamination spreading will be removed with you. You mean you're going to send us away to some free island like Iceland? I don't deserve a fate like that, your fortune. No, no, Mr. Marx. Nothing like that. You and Mr. Watson will be allowed to choose among any of the free, free islands to live on. Tahiti, Jamaica, Hawaii. And of course, you will be allowed absolute and complete freedom to do anything you want. Read anything you want. Even think anything you want. That's wonderful. No, it's perfect. That's all I want to be free to write anything I want. And not just jingles, but something more. Something different. But not somewhere like Tahiti. No. That would be too easy, too pleasant, too much like the life here. Isn't there somewhere else that's harsher, colder, less perfect? Oh, yes. There's a free, free island to meet every dissonant taste. Lapland, Greenland, Antarctica, the Falklands. Of course, we don't have many calls for those. And life on them can be a bit bleak and lonely. Wonderful. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Something cold and harsh and bleak. Then I know I'll be able to write something different. I'm ready to go. The sooner the better. Well, fine, fine. You can arrange everything with the Extended Vacation Bureau. Just tell my assistant, Maureen Krups. Thank you, your fortune. Thank you. John. But we'll talk before I go. May I read your poetry? Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Bernard, coming? Have you gone insane? I can't go somewhere like Lapland or Antarctica. I don't have to go someplace like that, do I, Your Fortune? No. No, of course not, Mr. Marx. I think you'd much prefer somewhere like Tahiti. Tahiti? Yes. A pleasant climate, no work, charmingly pneumatic females. Females? Yes. As many or as few as you desire. But study the brochures, Mr. Marks. I'm sure you'll find the right thing just for you. Thank you. May I have one moment? <clears throat> John, uh, I'm off to Tahiti. And uh, I just want to say that I wish you all the best. Thank you. I hope you find what you want. Charmingly nomadic females, you can do anything you want. Read anything you want. Think anything you want. What about me? Yes, what about you, Mr. Savage? You pose a much more difficult problem. Unfortunately, your dissidence is so ingrained, so much a part of you, that it might even be socially dangerous to send you to the free, free islands. And of course, it would be impossible now to send you back to the primitive reservation after your exposure to civilization. And on the other hand, you have made it quite clear that you can't be allowed to openly wander about as part of our society. I don't want to be part of your society. I want to be alone. I think it best to find some isolated place where I can be completely and totally by myself. Yes, that may just be the answer. Thank you. And for your sake, I hope it is. Yes, we'll try it for a while, Mr. Savage. I'll make all the arrangements for you. Savage today. But, but I have to 
Crazy John the Savage, I know him. No visitors today. You'll have to leave with the others. Move along. But You'll have to leave with the others. Please, please. Oh. move along. Move along, please. Good morning, Mr. Savage. I took advantage of my position to let myself in. I hope you don't mind. No. If you'd like to join me, I think I have enough for two. Enough of what, exactly? Well, it's going to be a stew. Potatoes, carrots, onions, fresh fish heads. Uh, no, thank you. I had some imitation scrambled cholesterol before I left. But you go right ahead. Interesting. You've grown your own food. Built furniture, woven cloth for yourself. So now you're Robinson Crusoe, and this is your very own Walden. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was referring to some other books that you perhaps haven't read. But then I'm sure the same ideas could be found in Shakespeare. Someone cast on an island who builds a dwelling for himself to live in. Be not afraid. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Ah, yes. The native Caliban from you, Mr. Shakespeare's The Tempest. And uh, is that what you are now, Mr. Savage? Not afraid? At peace with yourself. And if so, why do you have this? To drive evil spirits out of your body, I suppose. I don't believe in evil spirits anymore. I'm not even sure I believe in the good ones. I wish I could, but I can't. So we've taken that away from you, too. I'm sorry. But then if you don't believe in evil spirits anymore, why do you whip yourself? I still believe in my spirit. And the desires within me which are evil. But my dear Mr. Savage, with a violence passion surrogate treatment, you could achieve the same end, but without any of the unpleasantness and inconvenience. No need for hair shirts and whips. Just the proper button to push and in complete comfort. I don't want comfort. Then what do you want? Unpleasantness? Suffering? Pain? Yes, I want all of that. And all of the things you've done away with. I want danger, I want poetry, I want goodness, I want sin, I want freedom. Put more directly, what you are really saying is that you claim the right to be unhappy. All right, then. I claim the right to be unhappy. But that also means the right to be sick, to be crippled, to be insane. The right to grow old and ugly and wrinkled. The right to protect yourself from violence. The right to kill or be killed. The right to have too little to eat. And the right to hope, to love. Yes, even the right to fall in love. And then be spurned, betrayed, left wrapped with pain and jealousy. Is all of that really what you want, Mr. Savage? That's exactly what I want. I claim all of it. You're welcome. Now remember, I want the feely camera following him at all times. Now, DB? No, no, no. Wait till the savage comes outside. I'll tell you when. I'm sorry. Visitors aren't allowed here any longer. Who's in charge here? I am, officer. The name is Darwin Bonaparte. And I happen to be a feely film director. And this is a Darwin Bonaparte feely film conceived, produced, and of course, auteured by Darwin Bonaparte. Who gave you permission to do this? The Western World Controller, his fortune, must have Vermont. Oh, that's different. I'm afraid you're in the way there. If you don't mind, I don't like distractions when I'm creating. There he is! You see how I've caught the artistic essence of the savage, your fortune? A lone outcast surrounded by the uncivilized forces of nature. Yes, I do see. It's quite beautiful. Alluring, in fact. But I assume you wouldn't want it to be too... Uh... Too persuasive. <laughs> right. Exactly what I thought, too. Of course, this is just a rough cut. Naturally, I plan to get rid of all the alluring parts. You'll see, once it's edited, speeding up, slowing down, changing words. The savage will be uh, a charming comic figure. Charming? I thought you meant to say something else. Pathetic. 
pr pr primitive? Ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, yes. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Yes. When I finish, the uh, savage will be completely ridiculous. The Sense You Feely Corporation presents a new Feely film by Darwin Bonaparte. A farcical comedy produced, conceived, and autoured by Darwin Bonaparte. Simple Simon Savage. <laughs> They're all bottled on their holiday ration of Amphetapep. If the savage doesn't come out soon, it could turn into a riot. We'd better send for Soma gas. We may need it. Yes, yes sir. sir. No, please. Proclaims. Do you understand, John? already have them. I must find her. Perhaps so. She's over at the collection station. No, she's here. She's waiting for me. Breathe. I pretty breathe, Lenina. Then no more shall I. Here's to my love. Any 
termination casualty, Sergeant? No, sir. But there was one case of a complete derangement, a beta, female, Lenina Disney. And when we revived her, she began talking very strangely. We couldn't make out all the words, except, except for some very vulgar ones. Yes. Love. Marriage. And some even filthier than that. She kept pleading to be left here. Of course, we re-somatized her immediately. See that she's taken to the nearest moral reconditioning center. Obviously a case of acute sexomania. But a few days of synthotherapy and she'll be quite normal and happy again. Yes, yes sir. Mr. Savage? Mr. Savage! Is it finished? Yes, all records of the experiment have been computer shredded and completely electro erased. Of course, he posed great problems. People wondering how he could do without Soma. Why he lived alone. How, why, how, why. But still, I wonder. Was there another way, Mawina? For the savage? What? I don't know. Well, you tried to civilize him, to teach him. Yes, like Caliban. The plague take you Prospero for teaching me. Caliban? A different savage than a magician, an ancient kind of controller named Prospero tried to civilize. Just a story. I don't understand. No, but John did. Will there be anything more, your fortune? No, nothing more at all. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. This is Aldous Huxley, a man haunted by a vision of hell on earth. A searing social critic, Mr. Huxley, 27 years ago, wrote Brave New World, a novel that predicted that someday the entire world would live under a frightful dictatorship. Today, Mr. Huxley says that his fictional world of horror is probably just around the corner for all of us. We'll find out why in a moment. The Mike Wallace Interview, presented by the American Broadcasting Company, in association with the Fund for the Republic, brings you a special television series discussing the problems of survival and freedom in America. Good evening, I'm Mike Wallace. Tonight's guest, Aldous Huxley, is a man of letters, as disturbing as he is distinguished. Born in England, now a resident of California, Mr. Huxley has written some of the most electric novels and social criticism of this century. He's just finished a series of essays called Enemies of Freedom, in which he outlines and defines some of the threats to our freedom in the United States. And Mr. Huxley, right off the bat, let me ask you this. As you see it, who and what are the enemies of freedom here in the United States? Well, I don't think you can say who in the United States. I don't think there are any sinister persons deliberately trying to rob people of their freedom. But I do think, uh, first of all, that there are a number of impersonal forces which are pushing in the direction of less and less freedom. And I also think that there are a number of technological devices which anybody who wishes to use can use 
to accelerate this process of going away from freedom, of imposing control. Well, what are these forces and these devices, Mr. Hudson? I should say that the, uh, there are two main impersonal forces. Uh, uh, the first of them is not exceedingly important in the United States at the present time, though very important in other countries. Uh, this is the force which in general terms can be called overpopulation, the, the mounting pressure of population pressing upon existing resources. Uh, this, of course, is an extraordinary thing. Something is happening which has never happened in the world's history before. I mean, let's just take a, a simple fact that between the, the time of the birth of Christ and the landing of the Mayflower, the population of the earth doubled. It rose from 250 million to probably 500 million. Today, the population of the earth is rising at such a rate that it will double in half a century. Well, why should overpopulation work to diminish our freedoms? Well, in a number of ways. I mean, the, the um, experts in the field, like Harrison Brown, for example, pointed out that in the underdeveloped countries, uh, actually the standard of living is at present falling, that people have less to eat and less goods per capita than they had 50 years ago. And as the position of these countries, the economic position, becomes more and more precarious, obviously the central government has to take over more and more responsibility for keeping the ship of state on an even keel. And then, of course, you're likely to get um, social unrest under such conditions with, again, an, inv uh, uh, an intervention of the central government. So that I think uh, you, one sees here a pattern which seems to be pushing very strongly towards a totalitarian regime. And unfortunately, as in all these uh, underdeveloped countries, the only highly organized political party is the Communist Party, it, it looks rather as though they will be the heirs to this uh, uh, unfortunate process, that they will step into the power, the position of power. Well, then, ironically enough, the, one of the greatest forces against communism in the world, the Catholic Church, according to your thesis, would seem to be pushing us directly into the hands of the communists because they are against birth control. Well, I think this strange paradox probably is true. There is a, It's a, an extraordinary situation, actually. I mean, the, one has to look at it, of course, from a biological point of view. The whole essence of... Uh, of biological life on Earth is a question of balance, and what we have done is to practice death control in a most uh, intensive manner without uh, balancing this with uh, the birth control at the other end. Consequently, the uh, birth rates remain as high as they were, and death rates have fallen substantially. <coughs> All right, then. So much for the time being, anyway, for overpopulation. Another force that is diminishing our freedoms. Well, another force which I think is very strongly operative in this country is the force of what may be called over-organization. Uh, as technology becomes more and more complicated, it becomes necessary to have more and more elaborate uh, organizations, more hierarchical organizations. And incidentally, the advance of uh, technology has been accompanied by an advance in the science of organization. It's now possible to make organizations on a larger scale than was ever possible before. And so that you have more and more people living their lives out as subordinates in these hierarchical systems controlled by bureaucracies, either the bureaucracies of big business or the bureaucracies of big government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, the devices <laughs> that you were talking about, are there specific devices or uh, uh, methods of communication which diminish our freedoms in addition to overpopulation and overorganization? Well, there are certainly devices which can be used in this way. I mean, let us uh, take, uh, after all, a piece of very recent and very painful history is the uh, propaganda used by Hitler, which was incredibly effective. I mean, that, what were Hitler's methods? Hitler used terror on the one kind, brute force on the one hand, but he also used a very efficient uh, form of, uh, of propaganda, which uh, uh, he was using every modern device at that time. He didn't have TV, but he had the the radio, which he used to the fullest extent, mm -hmm. and was able to uh, impose his will 
on an immense mass of people. I mean, the Germans were a highly educated people. Well, we're aware of all this, but how do you equate Hitler's use of propaganda with the way that propaganda, if you will, is used, let us say, here in the United States? Well, Are you suggesting that uh, there no, is a parallel? No, needless to say, it's not being used in this way now. But uh, uh, the point is, it seems to me, that there are, are methods at present available, methods superior in some respects to, to Hitler's method, which could be used in a bad situation. I mean, I, what I feel very strongly is that we mustn't be caught by surprise by our own advancing technology. This has happened again and again in history. With technology has advanced, and this changes social conditions. And suddenly people have found themselves in a situation which they didn't foresee and doing all sorts of things they didn't really want to do. Well, now, what do you mean? Do you mean that we, we develop our television, but we don't know how to use it correctly? Is that the point that you're making? Well, at present, the television, I think, is being used uh, quite harmlessly. It's being used, I think, uh, I would feel it's being used too much to distract everybody all the time. But, I mean, imagine, which must be the situation in all communist countries, where the television, where it exists, is always saying the same thing the whole time, is always driving along. It's not creating a wide front of distraction, it's creating a one-pointed uh, drumming in of a single idea all the time. It's obviously an immensely powerful instrument. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the potential misuse of the instrument. Uh, exactly. We have, of course, uh, all technology is in itself morally neutral. These are just powers which can either be used well or ill. It's the same thing with atomic energy. We can either use it to blow ourselves up or we can use it as a substitute for the coal and the oil which are running out. You've even written about the use of drugs in this light. Well, now, th this is a very interesting uh, subject. I mean, uh, in this book that you mentioned, this book of mine, Brave New World, uh, I postulated a substance called Soma, which was a very versatile drug. It would... Uh, make people feel happy in small doses, it would uh, make them see visions in medium doses, and it would send them to sleep in large doses. Well, I don't think uh, such a drug exists now, nor do I think it will ever exist, but we do have drugs which will do some of these things, and I think it's quite on the cards that we may have drugs which will profoundly change uh, our mental states uh, without doing us any harm. I mean, this is the the pharmacological revolution which has taken place, that we have now powerful mind-changing drugs which, physiologically speaking, are almost costless. I mean, they are not like opium or like coca, uh, cocaine, which uh, do change the state of mind, but uh, leave terrible results physiologically and morally. Mr. Huxley, in your new essays, you state that these various enemies of freedom are pushing us toward a real-life, brave new world, and you say that it's awaiting us just around the corner. First of all, can you detail for us what life in this brave new world, which you fear so much, what life might be like? Well, to start with, I think this kind of the dictatorship of the future, I think will be very unlike uh, the dictatorships which we've been familiar with in the immediate past. I mean, take another book prophesying the future, uh, which was a very remarkable book, uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Well, this book was written at the height of the Stalinist regime and just after the Hitler regime. And he, there he foresaw a dictatorship using entirely the methods of terror, the methods of physical violence. Now, I, I think what, what is going to happen in the future is the dictators will find, as the old saying goes, that you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. That if you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in, uh, in Brave New World, partly by these uh, new techniques of, uh, uh, of propaganda. They will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions and uh, his physiology even, and so making him actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new uh, regime, but they will be happy in situations where they oughtn't to be happy. But let me ask you this. You're talking about a world that 
could take place within the confines of a totalitarian state. Mm. Let's become more immediate, more urgent about it. We believe, anyway, that we live in democracy here in the United States. Do you believe that this brave new world that you talk about uh, could, let's say, in the next quarter century, the next century, could come here to our shores? I think it could. I mean, I, I, that's why I feel it's so extremely important here and now to start thinking about these problems, not to let ourselves be taken by surprise by the uh, new advances in technology. I mean, the, for example, in, in regard to the use of the, of the drugs, we know there's enough evidence now for us to be able, on the basis of this evidence, and using a certain amount of creative imagination, to foresee the kind of uses which could be made in a, uh, by people of bad will with these things, uh, and to attempt to, to forestall this. And in the same way, I think, with these other methods of uh, propaganda, we can foresee and we can do a good deal to forestall. I mean, after all, the, um, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. You write in Enemies of Freedom, you write specifically about the United States. You say this, writing about American political campaigns. You say, all that is needed is money and a candidate who can be coached to look sincere. Political principles and plans for specific action have come to lose most of their importance. The personality of the candidate, the way he is projected by the advertising experts, are the things that really matter. Well, this is... Uh uh, during the last campaign, there was a great deal of uh, this kind of uh, statement by the uh, advertising managers of the campaign parties, this idea that the, uh, the candidates had to be merchandised as though they were soap or toothpaste, and that you had to depend entirely on the personality. I'm, I mean, the personality is important, but there are certainly people with an extremely amiable personality, particularly on TV, who might not necessarily be very good... Uh, uh, in poli poli positions of political trust. Well, do you feel that men like Eisenhower, Stevenson, Nixon, with knowledge of forethought, were trying to pull the wool over the eyes of the American public? Uh, no, but they were, they were being advised by powerful um, advertising agencies who were making campaigns of a quite different kind from what had been made before. And I think we shall see probably... Uh, all kinds of uh, new devices uh, coming into the picture. I mean, the, for example, this thing which got a good deal of publicity last autumn, a subliminal projection. I mean, as it stands, this thing, I think, is of uh, no menace to us at the moment. But I was talking the other day to one of the people who has done most experimental work in the in psychological laboratory with this, was saying precisely this, that it is not at the moment a danger, but once you've established a principle uh, that something works, you can be absolutely sure that the technology of it is going to improve steadily. And I mean, his view of the subject was that, uh, well, maybe they will use it to some extent in the 1960 campaign, but they will probably use it a good deal and much more effectively in the 1964 campaign, because this is the kind of rate at which technology advances. And we'll be persuaded to vote for a candidate that we do not know that we are being persuaded to exactly. vote for. Exactly. I mean, this is the rather alarming mm. nature, that you're being persuaded below the level of choice and reason. In, uh, in regard to advertising, which you mentioned just a little ago, in your writing, particularly in Enemies of Freedom, you attack Madison Avenue, which controls most of our television and radio advertising, newspaper advertising and so forth. Why do you consistently attack the advertising uh, agency? Well, no, I, I think that uh, advertisement plays a very necessary role, but the danger, it seems to me, in a democracy is this. I mean, what does a democracy depend on? A democracy depends on the individual voter making an intelligent and rational choice for what he regards as his enlightened self-interest in any given circumstance. But what these people are doing, I mean, what both for their particular purposes for selling goods and the dictatorial um, propagandists are doing is to try to bypass the rational side of man and to appeal directly to these unconscious forces below the surface so that you are in a way making nonsense of the whole democratic procedure which is based on conscious choice of, on rational grounds. Mm -hmm. 
Of course. Well, maybe, maybe I, you have just answered this, this next question, because in your essay, you write about television commercials, not just political commercials, but television commercials as such. And how, as you put it, today's children walk around singing beer commercials and toothpaste commercials. And then you link this phenomenon in some way with the dangers of a dictatorship. Now, could you spell out the connection, or how do you feel that you have done so sufficiently? Well, I mean, here, okay, this whole question of children, I think, is a terribly important one, because the children are quite clearly much more suggestible than the average grown-up. And, uh, again, I suppose that, uh, that for one reason or another, all the propaganda was in the hands of one or very few agencies. You would uh, have an extraordinarily powerful force playing on these children, who, after all, are going to grow up and be adults quite soon. Uh, I do think that uh, this is not an immediate threat, but it, it remains a possible threat. And you said something to the effect in your essay that the children of Europe used to be called cannon fodder, and here in the United States they are television and radio fodder. Well, uh, after all, Dave, you can read in the, uh, in the trade journals the most lyrical accounts of how necessary it is to get hold of the children, because then they will be loyal brand buyers later on. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I mean, again, the, you just translate this into political terms. The dictator says they will be loyal ideology buyers when they're grown up. We hear so much about brainwashing as used by the communists. Do you see any brainwashing other than that, which we've just been talking about, that is used here in the United States? Other forms of brainwashing? Not in the form uh, that uh, has been used in, in China and in Russia, because uh, this is uh, essentially the application of propaganda methods, the most violent kind, to individuals. It's not a shotgun method like mm -hmm. the, uh, the advertising method. It's a way of getting hold of the person and playing both on his physiology and his psychology till he really breaks down and then you can implant a new idea in his head. I mean, the descriptions of the methods are, are really blood-curdling when you, you read them. And not only the methods apply to political prisoners, but the methods applied, for example, to the training of the young communist administrators and missionaries, they receive a, an incredibly tough kind of training, which may cause about 25% of them to break down or commit suicide, but produces 75% of completely one-pointed fanatics. The question, of course, that keeps coming back to my mind <laughs> is this. Obviously, politics in themselves are not evil. Television is not in itself is mm -hmm. evil. Atomic energy is not evil, and yet you seem to fear that it will be used in an evil way. Why is it that the right people will not, in your estimation, use them? Why is it that the wrong people will use these various devices and for the wrong motives? Well, I think one of the, uh, of the reasons is that uh, these are all instruments for uh, obtaining power, and obviously the passion for power is one of the most moving passions that exist in man and uh, after all this is all democracies are based on the proposition that power is very dangerous and that it's uh, extremely important not to let any one man or any one small group have too much power for too long a time after what are the British and American constitutions except devices for limiting power and all these uh, new devices are extremely efficient instruments for the imposition of power by small groups over larger masses. Well, you ask this question yourself in Enemies of Freedom. I'll put, the, I'll put your own question back to you. You ask this. In an age of accelerating overpopulation, of accelerating overorganization, and ever more efficient means of mass communication, how can we preserve the integrity and reassert the value of the human individual. You put the question, now here's your chance to answer it, Mr. Huxley. Well, this is obviously, first of all, it's a question of education. Uh, I think it's uh, terribly important to uh, insist on individual values. I mean, what is, uh, there is a tendency, as um, you probably read a book by White, The Organization Man, a very interesting, valuable book, I think, where he speaks about the new type of group morality, group ethic, which uh, speaks about the group as though the group were somehow more important than the individual. 
But uh, this seems, as far as I'm concerned, to be uh, in contradiction with uh, what we know about the genetical makeup of human beings, that every human being is unique. And it is, of course, on this uh, genetical basis that the whole idea of the value of freedom is based. And I think it's extremely important for us to uh, stress this in all our educational life. And I would say it's also very important to teach people to be on their guard against the sort of verbal booby traps into which they're always being led, uh, to, to analyze the kind of things that are said to them. Uh, well, I think there is this whole educational side, of, and I think there are many more things that one could do to to strengthen uh, people and to make them more aware of what was being done. You're a prophet of decentralization. Well, uh, yes, uh, if this is feasible, uh, it's one of the tragedies, it seems to me. I mean, many people have been talking about the importance of decentralization in order to give back to the voter uh, a sense of direct power. Uh, I mean, uh, the voter in an enormous electorate feels quite impotent and his vote seems to count for nothing. This is not true where the electorate is small and where he is dealing with a, with a, a group which he can manage and understand. And if one can, as Jefferson, after all, suggested, break up the units uh, into smaller and smaller uh, units and so get a real uh, self-governing democracy. Well, that was all very well in Jefferson's day, but how can we? revamp our economic system and decentralize and at the same time meet militarily and economically the, the, the tough challenge of a country like Soviet Russia. Well, I think uh, the, the answer to that is that there are, uh, it seems to me that you, uh, the production, industrial production is of two kinds. I mean, there are some kinds of industrial production which obviously need the most tremendously high centralization, like the making of automobiles, for example. But there are many other kinds where you could decentralized quite easily and probably quite economically and that you would then have uh, th this kind of decentralized life after all you begin to see it now if you um, travel through the south this uh, decentralized uh, uh, textile industry which is springing up there Mr. Huxley let me ask you this quite seriously is freedom necessary? as far as I'm concerned it is yes Why? Is it necessary for a productive society? Uh, yes, I, I should say it is. I mean, a, a, a genuinely productive society. I mean, I think you could produce plenty of goods without much freedom. But I think the whole sort of creative uh, life of man is ultimately impossible without a considerable measure of uh, individual freedom. Of, uh, you, the initiative, creation, all these things which we value, and I think value uh, properly, are impossible without a, a large measure of freedom. Well, Mr. Huxley, take a look again at the country which is in the stance of our opponent anyway it would seem, anyway it would seem to be there, Soviet Russia. It is strong and getting stronger economically, militarily. At the same time, it's developing its art forms pretty well. Uh, it seems not unnecessarily to, uh, to squelch the creative urge among its people, and yet it is not a free society. It's not a free society, but here is something very interesting, that uh, those members of the society, like the scientists who are doing the creative work, are given far more freedom than anybody else. I mean, it's a privileged aristocratic society in which, provided that they don't poke their noses into political affairs, these people are given a great deal of prestige, a considerable amount of freedom, and a lot of money. I mean, uh, this is a very interesting fact about the new uh, Soviet regime. And I think what we're going to see uh, is a, a, a people on the whole with very little freedom, but with an oligarchy on top enjoying a considerable measure of freedom and a very high standard of living. And the people down below, the epsilons down below... Enjoying very little. And you think that that kind of situation can long endure? I think it can certainly endure much longer than a situation in which everybody is, uh, is kept down. Because, I mean, they can certainly get uh, their technological and scientific results on such a basis. Well, the next time that I talk to you then, perhaps we should investigate further the possibility of the establishment of that kind of a society. 
where the, where the drones work for the queen bees up above. Well, but yes, but um, I must say I still believe in democracy. If we can make the best of, uh, of the creative activities of the people on top, plus those of the people on the bottom, so much the better. Mr. Huxley, I surely thank you for spending this half hour with us, and I wish you Godspeed, sir. Thank you. Aldous Huxley finds himself these days in a peculiar and disturbing position. A quarter of a century after prophesying an authoritarian state in which people were reduced to ciphers, he can point at Soviet Russia and say, I told you so. The crucial question, as he sees it now, is whether the so-called free world is shortly going to give Mr. Huxley the further dubious satisfaction of saying the same thing about us. Stay tuned for a preview of next week's interview. Till then, Mike Wallace, good night. Thank <laughs> you.